Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Things have happened today. Um, we have we have seen media reports and social media reports attributed to Honorable Miles Sampa, in which he is uh, questioning the authenticity of the printout that we collected or that was issued by the Registrar of Society. We've also noticed that the Minister of Information, or the Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, has also issued a statement in which he questioned the authenticity of the subpoena that was given, that was issued by Honorable Mr. Justice Katanekwa, as well as the printout that came from the Restore of Society. We are deeply concerned as a patriotic front, because firstly, the public must know that these statements coming from Honorable Sampa and from Minister of Home Affairs are all orchestrated schemes uh, intended to ensure that people do not know the truth about what the filing status of our documentation as Restore of Society are. It is very clear from what you saw in Miles Sampa's posting that Miles Sampa continues to be the fraud that he was. You know, he continues to try and dignify what he did to the patriotic front by holding a conference that did not even qualify in, in, in accordance with the provisions of the, of the patriotic front's uh, constitution. And the, how can you question the authenticity of a document that comes out of the Restore Societies because that is backed by Smart Zambia system. The, whatever is printed from the Restore Societies is very authentic because that's a secure platform. We know that for the past one month they've been trying to change the fighting particulars at the Restore Society. And the young lady, the Restore Society, has resisted the pressure from the UPND government to the extent that when she now complied with the court order, they have dismissed her from work. This is a very sad state, you know, for women who are supposed to be in offices, who are supposed to receive the protection not only of government but also of men. This is a young lady who has decided she's going to strictly comply with the provisions of the law to secure the, the, the integrity of the office of registrar of societies. We know there have been skirmishes between Parliament and between the Minister of Home Affairs to put her under so much pressure that she can change the rates of particulars. Now we are aware that the reason why they've moved her is because they would like to interfere with the filing status of the registrar of society, you know, the way they are right now. The document that has been made public through the subpoena from court is actually an authentic document. We also want to question, you know, the, the decision that the Minister of Home Affairs has made to question the authenticity of a document that comes from a government department. This is a minister in a government department, and that Registrar of Society falls under his ministry. Is he now questioning, you know, what is contained in the register for all the societies which are registered there? Yeah? But we know it is because he has failed himself to put pressure on this young lady to change the registered particulars. He is now put pants down, and he wants to try and show that he's smarter than everybody else. The registrar has done nothing wrong for her to be moved out of that office, but we knew. We've been saying it as a leadership of a Patriotic Fund that a day is coming very soon when this young lady is going to be taught to vacate that office. But we know that this young lady is going to walk out of that office walking tall with her shoulders very high because she has resisted every attempt to break the law. This is the woman who is supposed to receive support from all the women leadership in this country. The NGOCC, if they, if they had time to go and work with somebody, they should have wasted their time by going to the, to the office of the Speaker of the National Assembly. We know the Speaker has been in abrogating the constitution from the beginning. Even in this instance, by accepting what Mr. Ngona had written to her, the speaker broke the law. 
she breached the constitution she even breached all guidelines of the commonwealth parliamentary association which tells you how you must regulate and monitor parliament but unfortunately ngo decided to go and stand in solidarity with the person who was doing something wrong and now we are questioning the ngo system if they are authentic if they are genuine they must go and stand with mrs tandiro mohen because mrs tandiro mohen has been removed from that office for doing what is right yes. you know jack Mimbu knows he's a lawyer he knows the effect of a subpoena you cannot get a subpoena if you don't swear before a judge and the subpoena that has been made you know viral on the social media is actually authentic and it's been signed by judge katanev how can a lawyer who is brought to the bar how can a lawyer who has sworn to uphold the constitution and ensure that we govern the country by the rule of law be questioning documents that come out of the court it tells you how ready the upnd is to abrogate the law and the constitution in the bid to ensure that they distract and destroy the patriotic front today we spent the whole day with leader of opposition trying to help our colleagues who've been incarcerated unfortunately for wrong things you know for, 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 for us to secure them to be released but we know why these colleagues of ours are behind bars they have not committed any offense in fact two of them have not even been charged they were just you know statements were written and they were deposited in castle without being formally charged when a person is charged according to what Honorable Mr. Mr. President at the end of said you're supposed to ask, to give him access to police bond as soon as reasonably practical we have we have we have met all the bail con bond conditions the MPs are ready to come and sign as sureties other government officials are ready to come and sign as sureties but now our colleagues have been whisked away from where we were being they were being investigated they've been deposited in three different police stations without the possibility of being given police bond the, office, the police officers who are carrying out the so-called investigation have run away we've gone to police headquarters they are not around we've come to all the other police stations they are not around it's because they would like to keep this room from circulation because we are the only ones who can speak authentically to what is happening with the mouse and ballet faction i don't even want to call it a faction this is an intention to steal by the, the upnd to steal the patriotic front leadership but we're not going to stop at anything we we'll call upon zambians to take a keen interest in, on what is going on here this is not about the patriotic front this is about democracy in this country this is about the constitution and this is about civil liberties that people have you know one of Nakachinda has been deposited in custody without even being charged you know he's been accused of you know making statements that, that incite uh, violence and, and also making presentations about the president it's not only mr Nakachinda who's been talking about the fact that mao sampa's convention was sponsored by the patriotic by the UPND. Every person in Zambia who has seen what is going on knows who is sponsoring Mao Sam. So no, man, no amount of pressure is going to be put on the patriotic front leadership for us to withdraw these statements. We are still continuing to accuse the UPND government of conniving with Sampa to take over the leadership of patriotic front. But this won't happen. We've said it so many times. Patriotic front is not a political party. It's a movement. Patriotic front has got a heart. You can remove us, you can arrest us, you can even put us in custody. People are going to still speak positively about the patriotic front. So we want to just assure our colleagues who are in custody that we are here standing firm for them and we are going to ensure that we use every legal avenue available for us to take them out of custody. If, they, if we fail, we know that justice is going to prevail. We are going to make applications to court to ensure that whatever they are being incarcerated for, uh, they are going to be released. We are also aware that the UPND government in a bid to continue keeping Zambians quiet, other leaders of political parties, apart from patriotic front, are also lined up for arrest. In the next couple of days, we are going to be seeing other presidents and other political leaders being arrested by this uh, this government which is using the law draconian this is lawfare this is actually war against your own citizens we hope that somebody within the ranks of leadership in, in upnd can reason with these people let people begin to enjoy their freedoms let people be begin to, those who speak the truth must be protected you don't protect those who lie you know and verify those who speak the truth how is it that mao samba is getting protection from this government Shame. when you're doing something wrong every time Shame. how is it that everybody who does something wrong is including with someone you know, now they've been issuing threats to members of parliament. How can Mr. Angona issue a threat to Honorable, you know, Chito okay. and ask him to, to come and, uh, you know, escapate himself for debating in parliament? It simply means these are not leaders. They don't even know what the constitution says about the power an MP has. They don't even know what the, the, the Privileges Act gives, the power that it gives to the member of parliament. But now, because they're being backed by the UPND, they've even started issuing threats against their own leadership. You know, we are trying very much to keep peace in this nation. Even what we are doing here, it's because we want to ensure that we peacefully utilize the law to get our friends released from custody. The alternative is going to be chaos. And if Zambia becomes chaotic, 
Zambians must, the patriotic fund must not be blamed. We have resisted violence, we have resisted, you know, uh, aggression for the last two years. But every other week, we are probably at a police station somewhere, trying to get somebody out of police. This, this should come to an end. And we are calling on people that are reasonable in Zambia to begin to speak to power. You know, you must speak truth to power. If we are all going to look like we are cowards, these guys are, are going to become dictators. How can the Minister of Home Affairs be, act, be acting the way this minister has been acting? Mm. Every day wanting to ensure he closes the patriotic front as a political party. We are here to stay and we are here to come back to power and nothing that they are going to do is going to stop us. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, the UPND government is uh, deploying their energy in the wrong direction. If only they took 10% of what they are doing, the efforts they are making in the wrong direction, to direct it towards the economy, we would not have the dollar trading at 23 quarter today. The much talked about IMFD has gone wrong. Why? Because instead of the UPND government officials focusing on improving the livelihood of the Zambian people, they are focusing on destroying the PF. And because two years later, they've realized it's not that easy to destroy the PF. They left their desks, their work, and attended to. Today, the Zambian people are meant to suffer. So what we, are, what we, we have to say to the UPN, it's very embarrassing when I saw my dear brother, the fellow counsel, Jack Wimbo. He's struggling to try and explain himself out. I mean, he's of counsel, and he goes out to try and, uh, uh, you know, call the documents uh, not authentic, documents that he did not author, documents that came out of the government platform, Smart Zambia platform. And today you want to call those, docu that, those documents float? You want to call the process, the court Shame. process Shame. float? Shame. No, no. Council, fellow council, Jack Mimbo. It's very embarrassing. We're actually very embarrassed that you don't know when to stop. I think as a government, you've made all the efforts trying to help uh, Mao Sampa. But that's a bad project. Unfortunately, that's a very bad project. There's no way that you can authenticate that project. And the reasons are simple. Because one, it did not go through the due process. Miles Sampa's retreat did not include a meeting of Central Committee. It did not include a National Council. It did not include a chairperson of uh, the party convening that particular meeting. So there are so many processes that you cannot amend. Even if we gave you 10 years, Comrade Jack Wimbo, that cannot be a PF conference, unfortunately. So uh, for your own information, even if we gave you the leeway, okay, that will never be a, a PF conference. For Comrade Sampa, I think he has been exposed. Uh, you can see even from the demeanor, the gentleman knows that it's all over. This day was to come, it has indeed come. The expose that was made yesterday regarding the filing status at the registrar's office brought this Sampa uh, battle uh, to a close. There's nothing to talk about, you know, dear citizens. It's very clear that uh, uh, Comrade Sampa was never and will never be PF president. What happened was a retreat and all other uh, people that were appointed by Ngona and the rest of them uh, are, are occupying whatever offices illegally. Of course, it's embarrassing that uh, Madam Speaker has had to go through this. But we wonder, we warned her that uh, she should have been a little bit more careful. Now, it's an international embarrassment. What happened at Parliament is an international embarrassment. Not only did she breach the Constitution, she also did not follow what the PF Constitution says. We wonder about a letter from Mona. The MPs themselves that are supposed to elect leader of opposition wrote to her and she ignored those letters. Now look at embarrassment. Look at embarrassment that our uh, uh, lady speaker has got to put up with. What is even more disappointing are the CSO, the civic, uh, the, our civic leaders who went to give her solidarity. They should have been a bit more careful to realize that uh, they were encouraging a lady who had breached the constitution. They had encouraged a lady who uh, recognized a letter from a stranger and made changes to leadership at parliament. Now, our advice to NGOCC is that uh, they should go back to government to encourage government that when people that have authority to make appointments, 
they should not do so by abusing women. We believe that the appointing authorities government are abusing women. They abuse women by making it seem as if the women that are appointed do not deserve those positions. And the women feel so guilty, they feel so favored, that they are ready to break the law to appease the appointing uh, authorities. Let Honorable, uh, Right Honorable Madam Nelly Muti know that she's been to school and she deserves the position of a speaker. She doesn't owe it to, to, to the, the sponsoring party. She should not break the law to appease the UPND. Nelly Muti has been a lawyer. She's been an advocate of ICO for a very long time. She therefore can serve as a speaker without feeling as if she's overly favored. There's no favor. So the NGOCC must remind government that the abuse of women making them feel they are inferior, they don't deserve the positions that have been given, and whenever they've been appointed, they should be abused to the extent that they can break the law. The few women that are able to stand and follow what the law provides are now being victimized. Where is the NGOCC? Why aren't they standing with uh, Madame uh, Mende, the registrar, who was victimized for respecting the law? Mende knew her value. She knew she deserved that appointment as registrar. She therefore did not need to give a favor or pay back a favor to any appointing authority. And because of standing up firm, because of being professional, she's now been victimized. So for NGOCC, instead of commending uh, Madam Speaker, they should have gone to the sponsors of Madam Nelly Moti and warned them that they are abusing the Speaker. They made the Speaker believe she didn't deserve to be a Speaker of the National Assembly. And therefore she owed them some unusual favors. There's no need for that. So women must be respected. We want to respect women in the Patriotic Front Party. When you are given a position as member of Central Committee, it's because you deserve it. You don't need to break the law to appease the appointing authority. That is our resolve as a party. That's our, that's our resolve. Our women in Zambia are being abused by appointing authorities because they, 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 they make our women feel inferior. And that is a warning for the UPND government. Let the speaker do her job. Give her the confidence. Let the registrar do her job. I thought that was very, very important. But for now, for our members, remain confident that particular uh, issue to do with Registrar of Societies was resolved. There was never a conference on the 24th of October. There was a retreat, and the retreat cannot be converted into a conference. That's the reason why the list of office bearers remains the same at Registrar of Societies. Thank you very much. Just to clarify also, this is not a final statement. There's, there's a query from the press that we should respond to. There's a letter that has been written by a gentleman called John Mutekenya, who claims that he was wrongly put as uh, one of the office bearers for the Patriotic Front on the list when he actually is not a member of the Patriotic Front. I must say that uh, there's a, been a deliberate interpretation of that file. Because if somebody read that form, it clearly shows that this John Mutekenya was removed as office bearer on the 10th of April. 2021. So he's no longer a member of Patriotic Front. He's also not uh, one of the office bearers. He's written a letter, you know, purporting to the Speaker and to Honorable Kebi Zulu firm that his name appears as one of, one of the office bearers. He's not. He ceased to be an office bearer. He used to be an office bearer from 2001 when the Patriotic Front was formed. But for the longest time, he was not a partic an active participant in Patriotic Front. And in 2021, it was thought prudent to remove him. So we don't know where they're taking this reading that this Mr. Mutekenya is still a member of the Patriotic Front and then office there. There is also a query that has suggested that uh, President Lungu has been joined for the Patriotic Front from 2002 according to the document that is doing uh, rounds on the, on the social media. Again, that document is being deliberately wrongly read by those who are you know, speaking against the Patriotic Front. What is very evident in that document is that President Lungu, then just a member of the Patriotic Front, was an office bearer from 17th of February 2002 when Mr. Sata was registering the Patriotic Front before the, after, I mean, before the election of 2001. So Mr. Lungu was one of the founding members of the Patriotic Front and when they were registering it and there was a requirement for you know, uh, office bearers to be filed, Mr. Lungu had his name included from 2002 on 17th February. He still remains an office bearer. We do not appoint presidents in the Patriotic Front. We elect presidents. And the public is aware that Mr. Lungu was first elected president in 2015 after the death of Mr. Michael Satamay, so rest in peace. We then repeated the election of Mr. Lungu in 2021 before the, 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 last, the last general election that we had. So people should not be malicious when they 
reading this document, but we know that there's malice on those who would like to destroy the patriotic front. And we will able to respond to every avenue they're going to use to try and destroy us. Because we'll be here. We want to get back to power in 2026. Thank we know you. the journey is very easy and we're going to do what yes. is right. Thank you. Thank you, brother. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.